Nikola Jokic can hit free agency after next NBA season. And the state of the Denver Nuggets kind of sets up in a way where the Nuggets are kind of in a bad position to convince Jokic to stay around. Jokic is looking at a situation where Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., two very good players, but also not really NBA All-Stars, those two players are now making a combined $76 million. Michael Porter Jr.'s contract is going to be $40 million per season. And Michael Porter Jr. is a type of player who, yes, can be good down the road, but is a player that you use to acquire a Bradley Beal or a player that you use to acquire an all-star caliber player to go along with Jokic. Nikola Jokic might win his second consecutive MVP this year in 2022. And Nikola Jokic is the type of NBA player where under the best of circumstances, he can win an NBA championship as the best player on his team. And the Denver Nuggets would not qualify as the best of circumstances, not just because they have the lowest ratings of any fan base in the NBA, but roster construction wise, they've put all their chips in on two players, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray who make so much money to not be on the floor. Both of them have battled injuries. Jamal Murray tearing his ACL last season. Michael Porter Jr. missing all of this season with a back injury. And as great as Mike Malone is, and as great as the Denver Nuggets have been over the last three years, Jokic kind of represents a team that is not anywhere close to the best of circumstances. But if Jokic wants to hit free agency and become his generation's version of Kevin Durant, or LeBron James flexing his might as the second best player of his generation in his prime and join another team, there is one perfect destination for matchup fit, creating a super team, and a perfect duo of teammates that can make it such that Nikola Jokic is the best player on a championship team. And that team has all the assets in the world to make this trade happen. I am talking about none other than the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns number one seed in the Western Conference right now. Those Phoenix Suns can trade for Nikola Jokic at the end of this season and build an NBA super team, the likes of which we have not seen since the Golden State Warriors of 2017 to 2019. So here's the basic format of the situation for Phoenix. Phoenix is the closest thing we have to a 1A, 1B superstar tandem. Devin Booker and Chris Paul. Chris Paul, obviously about 10 years to 10 to 15 years older than Devin Booker, but still almost equally as valuable to the Phoenix Suns as Devin Booker. Last year, they went to the NBA championship in what most people consider to be a bit of a fluke because they played the Lakers while injured and they played the Clippers without Kawhi in the conference finals and they beat Denver with no Jamal Murray and minimal contributions from Michael Porter Jr. in the second round of the playoffs. But Phoenix came back this year with basically the exact same team, and after being two games away from winning the NBA Finals, have run away with the best record in not just the Western Conference, but in all of the NBA. And so Phoenix might get back to the Finals, might not get back to the Finals, but if they built a trio of Jokic, Chris Paul, and Devin Booker, that team would be absolutely unbeatable because yes, Chris Paul is a dominant ball handler, but you can build an offense around Jokic that makes Devin Booker the third offensive weapon, a player who I'd argue if he was the number one weapon on the Suns, he would be averaging 35 points per game because Devin Booker is one of the most skilled off-ball offensive players we have in the NBA today. And that pairing with Jokic, who becomes the point center of the entire offense, would be a perfect trade that I think would make the Phoenix Suns unbeatable by anyone other than the Milwaukee Bucks. But here's how they make the trade happen. So Nikola Jokic is making $32 million per season. And looking at the Phoenix Suns roster, they don't have anyone other than Devin Booker and Chris Paul making that kind of money. What they do have as the centerpiece of the trade is former number one overall pick DeAndre Ayton, who's seeking a max from the Phoenix Suns and is currently in a contract dispute because he was forced to play out an extra season this year from the quote unquote notoriously cheap Robert Sarver, who may or may not be kicked out as owner of his team because of a sexual harassment and work, just toxic workplace situation. 
Robert Sarver doesn't want to give DeAndre Ayton a max contract. But if this were to become a trade situation, the Denver Nuggets would very much want DeAndre Ayton as a centerpiece, and the Suns would be happy to send Ayton as the current centerpiece over to Denver. And the way that would work is you sign Ayton to a max contract if you're Phoenix, and then immediately trade him to Denver. And the max contract between him and Jokic is identical. So by signing DeAndre Ayton to a max and immediately trading him to the Denver Nuggets, you have a perfect salary matching situation to make this trade happen. Now the Suns just need to compensate the Denver Nuggets for Nikola Jokic, and they can put together maybe the best package of any team in the NBA. Because if you're thinking about other Jokic suitors, it's Miami. Bam Adebayo is a pretty good piece. I'd argue him and Aiton are relatively close. Adebayo is a better piece, but still relatively close there. And no draft picks to deal from in the future. What Phoenix has is a combination of young players and an unlimited amount of draft picks to deal from. Phoenix has gotten so good so recently that they haven't had a chance to go all in and spend on their draft picks. They only had to give up one this year for Chris Paul. Their first round pick is going to go to Oklahoma City. After that, Phoenix has all of their draft picks through 2029 available to trade. So start off the trade. Phoenix is going to add their 2023 first round pick, their 2025 first round, or sorry, they're going to add their 2024 first round pick because you can't trade in back-to-back years, 2024, 2026, and 2028. And they're going to put in a right to swap picks in 2023, 2025, and 2027. So that's six draft picks in the control of the Denver Nuggets. DeAndre Ayton goes over there and Phoenix can send Cam Johnson as a side piece of the trade, but a young player on a rookie contract that can be used as a building block for whatever Denver wants to build. So Denver's now looking at a team that has a core of Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., DeAndre Ayton, and Cam Johnson, as well as whatever else they can put around them with all those draft picks that could be used to trade for a star player once another star player comes available. Maybe Donovan Mitchell, maybe a Jimmy Butler, whatever they figure out down the road, they have the draft picks to use at their disposal. Suns get an immediate super team that they go all in for, and Jokic is that player that you go all in for if you're the Phoenix Suns. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. I think this would be a landscape altering trade that is incredibly reasonable to get done this off season. Jokic to the Phoenix Suns, book it here on the Take It Easy podcast.